You're listening to FFOP Radio. Reach the audience. Welcome to the show. My name's Dave, and this is a fistful of podcasts from FFOPRadio.com. Back for another great week. Let me introduce you to my co host this episode. It's not your usual co host, it is uh, somebody special. You may know him from the Play No Save uh, site slash other outlets. It's PJ Zach on the show. <laughs> Hi, it's me. I'm from. Plain no save and other random outlets. And other <laughs> outlets. I'm Well, I mean, because you've got the, the website, and I'm sure you've got a Twitch, and we'll get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, also in studio, we've got Chris over on the couch. I am on the couch. Uh, so, PJ, people know you. You've been on the show before. So I thought, oh, crap, what am I going to do? You know, people know PJ. He, they know play no save. What, what can we do with PJ that's new? So I was... Going to shoot for like an obnoxiously long list of questions. <laughs> Shoot, <laughs> shooting for fifty questions. Okay. Oh, fifty. I, I, I was able to attain ten percent of that. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I have five. I have another. Basically, what I'm telling you is I have another FFOP five. But I wanted to make it like slowly transition this from just like a, a regular interview to like a, one of those job interviews where you d- agree. So disagree disagree strongly, strongly. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end we would see if we could uh, bring you on as a as an applicant however yeah. <laughs> i just got the five and then we can talk about video games because there's a few video games i have been playing recently that uh, i'm i'm pretty excited about especially at the price point Ooh, i'm intrigued so let's just first of all let's unpack it a little bit pj these questions are You know, they're kind of like the first FFOP5. They're not as high stakes, so there's no... I'm pretty sure I wasn't I the first FFOP5. Yep. Yeah, I think you're... (laughs) Now you're the first FFOP5-2. I think you should... PJ has been our our test dummy for so many things. PJ's number one. (laughs) We we should probably just add the number one to your name. I'll just call you PJ1. There we Poop go. Job one. Because er- every time, job every one. time, numero uno. <laughs> every time we do something, I try it out on PJ first because it's a it's a safe you know it's it's a home field. It's a safe territory. I know he's not going to try and sabotage it outright immediately. True. <laughs> so PJ one here is the FFOP five two. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, so this is a two parter. Uh, mm-hmm. This is gonna crack into your psyche a little bit. Okay. So I want I want two things. I want your favorite fictional character as a child. I'm gonna take anything below the age of thirteen, uh, and somebody today your favorite fictional character. Maybe not your favorite favorite. I'm not gonna nail you down, but give me one of your you know top ten or whatever. All right. So favorite Start fictional with the kid. character as a kid. Um, yeah, thirteen or under. I mean, realistically, I'm gonna have to revert. It it would be one of the two shows where it would be either Ghostbusters or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because those were the two things okay. when I was younger that meant a lot to me. Uh, 100%. So I would 100% revert to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because there's one distinctive character I can choose which most people judge me by the second I say the name and that is Raphael. Uh huh. Yeah, I get that too. But here's, here's what people don't get, uh, PJ. I think we've had similar conversations to this uh, and maybe I've not said this explicitly like this before, but I'm going to tell you this. Uh, there are two types of people in, you know, in the world. You got the people who think they are a type of turtle, but they are not. And then there are the type of people who think they are and they are right. Yeah. So I am an expert at turtle appraisal. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. I think what throws people off about that with you especially because i say raf they say yeah obviously the asshole turtle that's you dave you say raf and people go no 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 not 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 pj one Uh (laughs) uh-huh they say they say raf is no pj uh pj he's now here's the thing i i knew this was going to come up so i did give this a little thought earlier in the week about this specific conversation we are having now awesome so yes 
Your favorite turtle may be Raph, but when people look at you, you are a Donnie. That would be the last person that I would think. I know, I know. But here's the thing. I, I, I'm I, not saying this willy-nilly, PJ. Mm-hmm. I put thought, I, I was awake at 3 a.m. in my bed is, thinking, is that was the random shit. day that you messaged me at like 5 o'clock it, in the yes. morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that day. It was that very day. And I said, oh my God, he's going to he's gonna take this news hard. Because I know he's a RAF fan, but he is a Donnie personality-wise. And, but, and here's the thing. At least impressionistically, mm-hmm. uh, you you come across as a a person with a fair amount of knowledge, a, 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 a with a broad, you know, swath of topics. Yeah, um, you're not. I, I wouldn't say that you've got the attitude in the '80s style. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so that's the thing. Your personality and all of my interactions with you have led me to Donnie because you're you're fiercely intelligent and sort of middle of the road, like. Um, you know, you know, I've never seen you get super like angry and I've seen you. So, uh, what I'm saying is you're, you're a Donnie because you know, you, you keep control of yourself and you're smart, but here's the thing about Donnie. I think he secretly wants to break out and, and cut loose a little bit. So your, your, your leanings towards Raph totally makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's it, when I say that, when I say Raph, it's always that like, Raph is the type of character that I like. Doesn't necessarily mean that it is me. <laughs> right. So. That's the thing. I, there's a there's a like and there's an R, and you are yeah. a Donnie. Because I, I, I like get... anti heroes, and Raph is an anti hero. Yeah, and and here's the thing. I, I you know now we're going to talk about Ninja Turtles for a very long time, PJ. Because <laughs> uh, I went into Gotham City Comics, a local comic book shop here, and I saw that Funko Pop put out uh, some brand new versions of the Turtles and April and Casey Jones. Mm-hmm. So behind me on the relic shelf, you can't see it, obviously. This is just audio. But I've got one of the brand new redesigns of the RAF, and I'm going to get the Casey Jones. Two, because I was like, okay, you know what? I'll get a Leo and I'll get a RAF because they're the ones who are bam, bam, bam. You know, they're always the, at each other's throats, but they love each other. And Mike and Donnie are a pair. So, you know, I kind of got that. But I was like, no. Since I am most like a RAF, I, I need a Casey Jones. Casey Jones... And Raph are both dicks and anti-heroes, but I don't think Casey Jones gets enough play. Yep, yeah, I I think they get each other though. I think like right, especially after they're they're like uh, them dealing with each other inside the movie. Like you really get a feel mm. for like they understand oh, each 100%. other because yeah, yeah, yeah. they are both dicks, <laughs> and and they that's just the, understand that's the each thing. other. That's what I stumbled upon is when I was sitting there showing these Funko Pop figures to my son, and I said. You know, what is it? What are we going here? Uh, are we going Raph or are we going Casey? And I was like, why not both? Because they're a perfect pair. And then I had this epiphany. Yeah. And just because everybody says, okay, what turtle character? You know, you don't have to get stuck with the main four. We got Casey Jones. There's April O'Neil, obviously. Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to choose the villains. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, the villains, I think are, we're gonna go the for- villains aren't interesting enough. The turtles are no. the interesting characters there. Yeah, and that's that's part, well. I mean, the Shredder is semi interesting. All the ones that have more than one episode, I think, are yeah, are fine. Baxter Stockman, he is a relatable everyman, uh, yeah. but you know, weak, weak willed because all he wanted to do was was to create the Mousers and and solve New York's problem. And and uh, Shredder's like, oh, you know what? This could end a lot of problems. However, I want you to fight some giant turtles. <laughs> anyway i digress so pj second part of that question who is your current day favorite fictional character uh i it's so it's that this is a hard question for me because i still like anti-heroes um Mm -hmm. but i think i'm just gonna revert to my all-time favorite fictional character which okay. is from an anime, and I'm not sure if you're going to know what it is. Probably but his not. name is Mugen. Nope. No. <laughs> his name is Mugen, and he's from um, Samurai Champloo. Okay. <laughs> you're going to have to unpack it a little it's, bit for it, me. He's an anti-hero, though. So, like, basically, the, just to give you the quick rundown of what his character is, is he is from an island full of criminals in feudal Japan. Mm. And he ends up helping this... Um, him... 
and another guy end up helping this teenager r- get through, like, try to find her father. Okay. Her, like, her work burns down, and they try to help her find her father, but they also hate each other at the same time. So the two main characters literally want to kill each other, but they also are in debt to her because she saved them from dying. So, like, their their whole, like, they have a struggle between each other, but... At the same time, they're also trying to help her because Aww. they literally both owe their lives to her. Hmm. And he's he's an anti-hero because he's literally grew up as a criminal. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I, so this puts me in the, in the mind of something that you may like, and maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Uh, I, however, everybody should see this movie. Uh, it's uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, so that that's what that kind of reminds me of is like the man with no name, Clint Eastwood's character. You got Tuco, and you've got uh, Lee Van Cleef's character. Now, all of those dudes are essentially anti-heroes, and I think that's why that movie is so great. Yeah. But here's the thing about anti-heroes is I don't think anybody, I shouldn't say anybody, a lot of people want to be and identify with the hero and not necessarily with, like, the dude who's just a regular guy who was gifted this extraordinary something, because no one wants to come to terms with that. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to be like, oh, you know, I do the right thing because that's the thing I do. But with an anti-hero, they're just trying to be themselves and they keep getting suckered into other people's problems because as, you know, humans and flawed characters, you end up doing the right thing anyway. Like the Hulk, he's essentially a mindless killing machine when he's a big green monster. However, in most cases, he's like, ah, oh, you know, I'll put it all aside to save the day. <laughs> Pretty much. People, you know, and I... <laughs> Those are complex characters, but for but you want like uh, you know someone to you want Captain America to throw a shield and have it bounce off a dude's head, and him to be like that's for America instead of uh, Bruce Banner like being mentally tortured and then turning into a rage monster and destroying a city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I I like I just I've always liked the anti heroes because mm. they tend to have more depth than the heroes most of the time. Yeah, and and that's so. part of it too because they're they're flawed characters. They're and since they are anti heroes, like everybody's an anti hero. You, me, and everybody is an anti hero because a hundred percent of the time you are looking out for yourself, not necessarily the greater good. Yeah, I, I don't understand why more people don't identify with that. I don't understand why the Hulk doesn't take off cinematically because everybody is the hulk everybody has anger everybody has these normal issues it's just nobody has the the power to smash somebody in the face and maybe that's it maybe it's jealousy i was gonna say most most people if you look at the traits of the average person nobody can identify with the actual heroes of anything right and and that's the thing maybe maybe that's it for for like comics and stuff and these larger life characters they want to be like oh that's something i can never be and that's like an everyday person. Yeah, because maybe yeah. like an everyday person getting, you know, jacked up on gamma radiation or spider bite or whatever. They're un- everyday people are unpredictable. Maybe that's why people don't like any heroes. Uh, spider bite. Spider-Man <laughs> is probably the most, the best hero of all time because he is just a normal person who just happened to get powers. And, but he's also kind of lightning in a bottle based... Uh, I, depending on his incarnation because he either like in the ultimate version where he's young he's too young to be disillusioned and still can have that like i'm gonna go save the world attitude yeah it's he he is he can potentially end up being the most in-depth superhero because because he's already well grown by the time he becomes a superhero and he just doesn't want to be it but he gets these powers and he's like oh i kind of have to because i can do things and then he just doesn't I, he's so conflicted most of the time so yeah and, and that's the thing i think there's a lot of i had a conversation with virus some years ago it's still saved in my phone because it <laughs> one day he'll grow a <laughs> pair of balls and he'll come talk to me and we can finish it but my stance was essentially like every superhero that is for all intents and purposes immortal would eventually stop giving a shit about humans because why wouldn't you like, I mean, if technically you, Captain America did in the movies. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, he went into the future or he went to the past, came back right. from the past into the future. And then he just didn't care anymore. No, no, no. What because I'm saying, he realized- I, I get that. Like he got jaded and that's what I'm saying. Like he is a normal human, essentially, um, on, on roids. 
My my <laughs> example, know, like some pretty big roids. Yeah, yeah, well, huge roids, whatever they are. Like he went into a <laughs> chamber and came out a huge dude. Like Thor, he was born an immortal, essentially. Well, whether or not he can be killed, nobody, like no comic book character can be killed. So this is all moot. However, Thor, after you know. 10, 20,000 years and seeing umpteen generations of humans die every whatever, like in the blink of an eye compared to him. How do you give a shit anymore? Like uh, it would be like having an ant farm and they're constantly replenishing themselves and they're constantly dying. But since you say, live forever, comparatively speaking, how do you get attached? Thor, Thor is a bad example though because he's not supposed to get involved in the affairs of humans. Like, pick, pick your pick your poison. I don't care. <laughs> Superman, give me the century. Yeah, yeah. Well, give me su- Superman is like Superman could destroy anybody with a flick of his finger. Exactly. So, so it w- and essentially he cannot be killed. And for all intents and purposes, as long as the sun shines, he's immortal. So how do you keep a man like that from getting bored with humanity and being like, fuck, I'm so tired of pulling people out of burning buildings. Like th- I don't superhuman or not. Everybody has got a breaking point. And after Lois has been dead for a couple of centuries and everyone he knows, like he's like, Oh, I remember Jimmy Olsen. But since, you know, in comics, we'll never have to come to terms with the reality of the situation. We'll never know. However, my fucking theory still stands that if we had superheroes, they'd eventually just be like, fuck it. This leads me to another question is, sure. Have you ever seen the series, the boys? I have not. However, I have, it's been on my watch list for a while. Okay. Well, I know it touches upon I will just leave it at this. That is a show that you should see because that would delve into the question that you're asking me right now. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I'm more interested in talk that that's part of it is like, I, I get that all of these issues are being addressed in other sorts of media. However, like I just like them as thought experiments. Like I don't actually care what a writer, because it's all fiction, like a fictional like this, the boys is a fictional series based off of a fictional set of comics in it's, our, it, it's pretty much justice league, except if it was in real life, that's yeah, all it is. It's like the craziest Venn diagram. Like the thing that connects yeah. these two bubbles is a reality in which these two things connect, but one is commenting on the other and it'll make your head explode. So <laughs> I would, I would rather just in my own head be like, yeah, I believe Superman would get, tired of shit and just start ripping heads off of people just to start proving points. Uh, but you know, obviously That's why I like seeing these other things like, uh, bright burn, um, the boys and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like you see what would Superman be if he wasn't good? <laughs> I know exactly what, like he would be cause he was raised by human. Pa- like we're all coming from the same point of reference. Like nobody can write a character that will unless they never change that never gets tired of somebody like yeah lois and and superman have been banging for what 90 100 years now and and as long as you know <laughs> we live in that 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 uh, false reality of the comics fine whatever but thor would be splitting heads just to make the day go by man like he would be up a mount olympus like let's say you know in, in the, the reality of the, the cinematic universe, he meets Natalie Portman and the scars guard and yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, time goes on. Somebody hits fast forward on the clock. Natalie Portman is dead. Her children are dead. Their children are dead. Yada, yada, yada. Here's Thor. And he's like, yeah. So do I go down and save some more humans from another doomsday or do I like, is that like, there's always going to be more villains. Yeah. The villains are never going to stop. I know. You just, so, so, if anything, the villains become more when there are superheroes. Right. And my problem is once you get to be an adult and you start seeing this vicious cycle and you think, well, so where do you go from here? Uh, yeah. That's when you have to say Superman would start splitting heads and he would have like a fascist <laughs> utopia in no time simply because it would be less of a hassle. Yeah. It would, he's like, I don't want to be bothered anymore. Yeah. We all go. We all go path of least resistance and sure you know superman starts out as your christopher reeves like oh truth justice in the american way but eventually he's like i've got work to do and i cannot fly around the world backward 40 times to stop that dam from breaking here's what i'm gonna do everybody go to bed at eight o'clock i've got shit like i've got you know i've got work at the <laughs> daily planet uh brain by eight o'clock i'm gonna laser you yeah he's like i'm gonna be flying th- all like because he can 
do it. He's Superman. He's like, if I'm going to, at eight o'clock, I fly around the entire world and I threw anyone on the street is just sawed in half with lasers. He's like, I've got <laughs> shit to do. There's, there, I got an article about, uh, you know, the Gotham football team, Brainiacs causing some nonsense over in, you know, some Delta Quadrant or something. You know, he's got shit to do. And eventually yeah, I, he's a busy man. Maybe you would just be like Brainiac, you know, knock yourself out. He's like, I can always come back later because I'll never die. <laughs> All right, nice uh, answer in that question there, PJ. Oh my god, I totally forgot that Thanks. it was a question from so, a long time ago. Question, <laughs> question two. If we keep it at 20 minutes of question, this will be a nice short show. Uh, so question two. <laughs> same, same sort of uh, media type stuff, but and this has always been a sticking point for me because books seem so old-timey, but like a hundred years ago, people were like, don't read books. You need to go out and see the world. And now we're like, please read a fucking book, you ignorant fuck. So that being said, <laughs> what is the first book you remember like reading and actually enjoying? Like it wasn't an assignment. You like picked it up. And you're like, oh, I like reading or I at least like this book. Uh, so this is a this is a good question because if I remember back, I, I, I used to read... To be honest, in like uh, fourth and fifth grade, I used to read a lot of the like R.L. Stein books. Oh, we all. But did. I don't remember a particular one that like really st stood out to me. I just mm. liked them all. But the first book that I actually had to read that um that I was assigned to read that I uh, like through school where they were like you have to read these books. These are the things that we're going to talk about. Yeah, was actually The Lord of Flies. Uh, that was like the first book that I was like, wow, like it, it just kind of like it took me back because I'm like the, the like the book just at the end of it had like threw me for a ringer. And I was like, I was totally not expecting how this was going to end out because I was still young at the time. Mm -hmm. So like something like that wouldn't have popped into my head. It's so. it's so crazy to me because like even as like when I was a kid and like we had, you know, recommended reading, like everybody's reading the house on Mango Street or whatever, like The Giver. And it was always like, I don't know, it, it just seems so like bizarre to me that like all of the recommend or like uh, for book reports and stuff, all this stuff is written at the turn of the century. So the in English class, you're reading these books in like this antiquated language and it feels so like uh like up uh, has no one written a, a like an interesting new book in recent times where we have to be like we're going to be reading dickens and you we're going to be reading uh, jd salander i hey now he was never a forced <laughs> read for me so i have no experience yeah. but like again all these books are so old and i could never get into them yeah, it's. I mean, the it it was always interesting when uh, in high school we had to read a Shakespeare book every year. Oh, that yeah. was like yeah. we had to do one Shakespeare a year, and <sighs> reading whenever we read those, we read those in class out loud. Yep, somebody had to turns. read each part. <sighs> Shakespeare and is it so was dull. Always, it was always interesting just to hear people try to read say it. the like, just read it <laughs> because it was <sighs> so different yeah. than. I what don't we speak. I don't get <laughs> is there something I am missing about Shakespeare? there must be something I'm missing about Shakespeare because I have been in Shakespeare plays, I have read the Shakespeare plays, you know, I whatever. I have been in and performed and read them and still could not give a single shit. Like mm -mm. the I get the, I like Macbeth. I That's get the probably stories, the only one that I like. Uh, the stories are relatable, however, since the language is such a disconnect, like why why make the barrier for entry so high? Like we have so many more new interesting stories of betrayal. We have comedies, but everybody wants to like co constantly blow Shakespeare's corpse because why? Like I I don't because I think uh, it's it, it's probably more because people nowadays just don't like we've always just um, reverted to like the same stories for so long that people have just not tried to look at any of the newer stories and I see guess. if any of them are worth or maybe worth it's going through. Uh, I feel like also depending on your source, William Shakespeare is also this romanticized character where like I feel like every day I log into any browser 
there's an article that'll either say, yep, Shakespeare is exactly who he said he was, or just kidding, he was a fat dude living in New Jersey, <laughs> or no, we found new evidence that said he was exactly what he was, and the picture is right, and this one's like, no, this was actually a picture that someone found in a cigar box that had nothing to do with Shakespeare, and I'm like, so what do, what do you believe? Like, was it, were the plays written by a million people who were way smarter than a farmer should be, aka Shakespeare, growing up in the middle of nowhere? Or yeah. was he actually a smart guy who actually somehow found out about the world from a farm? I don't know. I don't care. It's all boring. Yeah. What What is good? There needs to be more more new stuff like out there because yeah, most of the stuff that they teach in schools yeah. is a, a compelling old. story. Is a compelling story. I think that things that are old get more play simply because they are old like there if something survives decent, there are tons of good authors out there now i know and i don't you get don't it like to, like maybe if if you write something and even if it sucks if it survives a century people will read it and think that it's a fucking like if if i in a hundred years someone unearths my corpse and there's for whatever reason a note i wrote in junior high clutched to my chest someone will pull it out and be like oh my god the poetry in this human's speech and <laughs> antiquated and you know basically it's like hey what's up nothing much here just chilling in math class and people would be reading it because it is just old yeah. they would say oh yeah. man was up indeed look at this <laughs> he, he spells uh the first word was ha interesting w-u-z now that's an interesting uh variation of what's and we'll have professors being like oh interesting uh, let's dissect this let's, yeah and meanwhile like whatever like Shakespeare could have just stolen everything, but it's old. But yeah, it's I mean, old. he could have. It's old and people like it. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some old things that got old, but were good in the beginning. <laughs> but <laughs> if they suck in the beginning and then somehow make it too elderly, people somehow give a shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you you could find like an old paper that's just like if, if if an old woman wrote i farted on a piece of paper and put it in an attic and in 80 years an old man uh was cleaning out some boxes and found it and it was all calligraphied he would put it in a scrapbook because it's <laughs> yeah. old the content doesn't matter it's old and people would be like oh my god People that, like to save old yeah. keepsakes and not only that you can point to it and be like that was made by a feather and ink from uh, you know, a squid that your it grandmother. Was in old school. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of when you text something and somebody just saved a random text that you sent to somebody and they put that in your grave. You know, or it's... just chicken scratch because <laughs> nobody knows cursive anymore. I have spent my whole I, life I know, writing on physical I, paper, and it has. I helped. know cursive, <laughs> but there is I. Even when I have to sign my name, I don't sign it in cursive. That's but when are sure. you reading handwritten documents? Like, yeah, like when someone I, hands you a paper, I think, <laughs> as an adult, I'm just like, why did I learn cursive? Because I write my signature in cursive, but I only write four letters of my last name in my actual signature. <laughs> so, well, your, your signature like, is different. I, I don't consider a signature, quote unquote, writing. Your, your signature is like your logo. I, I write my signature is P dist. That's all I write is my signature. Yeah, I mine says nothing. It's a D and an L and a bunch of scribbles. However, those scribbles I have meticulously practiced so that if you look at it and there's the, the the dot that I keep in place to show you there's an I somewhere in there, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's his. Because it's oh yeah, no, you, you will know it is my signature based off of it because I I can recreate that signature like. A billion times because I literally practiced it a long time, a lot when I was younger. Oh, did, so I as I got older, like I just did that. write the same thing. I write over my and over. whole name out if, in cursive. If we <laughs> took, I'm not writing my whole name out. It's like <sighs> it's like nine letters for my last name. It's not uh, happening. Yeah. I, <laughs> if you've ever seen my signature, you know you just you just make sure all the loops are there. But that's the thing. I feel like every I don't know if this is held true for girls, but every boy I knew growing up uh, would constantly practice writing their own name. I had sheets and sheets and sheets of paper where I would just do 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 do, do write my own signature over and over and over again because I think in everybody in the back of everybody's head, you're like, what if I get famous? Yeah, well, I, I did it a lot. Girls, I, and it's a great way to waste time in math. Yeah, <laughs> girls signs their names, their first names, and then the last name of their crush. 
Yeah, but you're not doing that's a different thing you're you're living in a fantasy world where you're like oh i'm i'm 12 and we're gonna be in a house with a picket fence and yada 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 well, yeah, you're doing that that's like i didn't sign my name i didn't make a signature for myself yeah. thinking i'd be famous Th- this is like not maybe i'm not even famous but it's like a when someone says oh can I, you I sign wrote this multiple pages in in notebooks of oh, yeah. just me consistently writing my signature over and over the, again the number of trees lost to children <laughs> writing their own names uh, is is staggering <laughs> i'm sure well i don't like even once, think they w- learned especially once now. Probably like by like in like sixth and seventh grade, I was just writing my signature on a consistent basis. Yeah, I'm like, because... I need to know how to do this, and I'm just going to keep doing it. And then, then like, like you, <laughs> you, then you become an adult, and you're like, ah, this is when it pays off. Like you realize you're never going to be famous. However, you are going to have to sign a lot of shit as an adult. Like try buying a house or a car, and if you don't know your name and your social <laughs> by minute three, you're doing it wrong. Like holy yeah. shit. But that's the thing, like, and and everybody, ugh, maybe I shouldn't say everybody, because I remember people who come in and still sign, like, with an X, like, they're a fucking farmhand <laughs> from the 1860s <laughs> coming into town to get cattle for their master, and they're like, well, we need a, a sign on the bill of sale, and they're like, yeah, yeah, and they just pull, like, a big black crayon they, in two they swipes. Igor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that, that still happens. So may, maybe it's a... um. Maybe it's a point of pride for some people. Well, like, I don't think yeah. Trung t- uh, writes in cursive. Uh, well, he started I mean, writing in a different you language. You need to know how to write cursive. It's, it's. Well, when you have to sign a check, you have to sign a check. That's still, how I people learned People can it. print it. Yeah, like, that, now it, they don't teach, they don't teach the younger generation cursive at all. I know. So That's why I'm they just print it. it. If There's anyone no were to take a critical look at any of the checks I write, someone would be like, oh, a 12 year old somehow snuck into this man's house and is writing fraudulent <laughs> checks because th- yeah. that's what they look like. You have to accept that people's handwriting is going to be bad. Yeah, there's like cursive just doesn't get done anymore. It's just it was an old thing that we just happened to learn yeah. when we were younger because now the importance is like computers weren't a big thing yet, and now that they are a big thing, cursive just went out the goddamn window. Yeah, uh, who's got time? It's all chicken, like straight lines and harsh, jagged slashing on a paper, and then you hand it to someone. They say, "Oh my god, someone's been kidnapped," and they stop to read it, and they like, "Oh, we just need." Milk. We used to have to like in class, they'd be like, "Write this pair, like write this entire oh, essay yes. in yeah. cursive," and then we would write it. And I would be like, "Oh, I'm one of the first people done. This is awesome." And I'm just like, "Why?" And and I got older. I was like, "I none of that mattered. Not a single bit Listen, of that mattered." You <laughs> don't look back at your education critically because you'll find that a lot of it doesn't matter. You're being warehoused. Yeah, yeah I don't remember ninety percent of my schooling. Like, and that's the I remember. I have a good memory, so I remember a lot of it. I'm just like, none of this mattered. Not a, not a single bit of it. I have always had an opinion on this. However, I never cared to share it until I had a kid, because now everybody's up my ass about it. Uh, <laughs> when, when in So from, like, whatever, birth to, like, let's say high school, your education doesn't get, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, guess what? You're going to learn how to talk. You're going to learn basic math. Everything from grade one to, like, let's say grade nine, you can probably learn just out in, like, apart from history and your your more complex math. But you're going to forget all that anyway. Yep. So all these yeah. uptight, stuck-up parents and assholes who are like, oh, I don't like the school system in this area. Here's the thing. Your kid's a shithead. He's not going to learn. Your kid's interested in learning. He's going to learn something. I went to shitty schools. Do I seem stupid? No. Am I? Yes. However, I've been able to find workarounds because I was interested in not seeming stupid. However, if someone did have the drive to learn, they could be smart and go beyond the surface level like I have. Yeah. So pretty much what it is. That's the thing. You no matter how good your school is, how much do you think a fourth grader is gonna take away from that class, bitch? Yeah. Like they none don't give a my butt. job. None of my job <laughs> I need anything that I learned in school. No. I fourth grade was had, crazy hey. hat day. That's what you remember. <laughs> <laughs> I made a diorama of Toy Story in fourth grade. Nice. I dressed up they as Larry Bonds for one one year. Toy Story came out and I was in fourth grade. What? And I made it like a project I'm not, with it. I'm not questioning the, the timeline. I'm questioning the validity of the educational value. I, I mean, I don't remember what it was for. I just remember I wanted to use Toy Story. 
in See, some kind of project, and t- I had I'm to make sure an the teacher actual was like, diorama. Freeform, I don't give a shit, Day. Make a diorama. And you're like, I like Toy Story toys. And yeah, there's, I had like Buzz Lightyear in there. I had Woody. Like, yep, there's little little PJ like Ralph. Ah, what's a diorama? <laughs> I bet my Buzz. <laughs> Poor little PJ. And they'd rub his hair, and they're like, yep, that's a good diorama. Here's a gold star. <laughs> Yep, that sure was a movie. Now let's move on to somebody who made a volcano. <laughs> Anywho, so PJ, question number three. Mm-hmm. What movie have you seen more than any other? I'm not saying it's your favorite. What movie have you seen more than any other? Ooh, so this is an interesting question because there is a particular movie that has came out in the last 15 years, uh-huh. maybe, that I have seen. And every time I see it, I think it gets better and better. Okay. And it is it is becoming one of my top five favorite films. I am on the edge of my seat. It is called Hot Fuzz. Really? I love Hot Fuzz. I and every time I watch it, I think it gets better and better because I pick up on different things mm-hmm. that I didn't pick up on before, and I just genuinely think everything about that film is good. So, and and that's the one you're also say, so this is a double dip. It is be- quickly becoming your favorite, but you've also seen it the most in your life. Yeah, because like I, every every time, like when people are like, "Oh, well, what what movie should we watch?" I'm like, "Well, have you seen Hot Fuzz?" And they're have like, "No," watched? and I'm like, "Well, let's watch it because it's it is." <laughs> I'm like, I see the thing is like uh, it's. It's, it's part of the Cornetto trilogy, which I really like. Shaun of the Dead, and which is smart. one of my favorite films. Yeah, and I and and it is a Hot Fuzz is the second of the Cornetto trilogy, which it is incredibly good. I don't like the third as much as the first two, but like is the third one, Paul? Hot Fuzz is just a very good comedy film. Like it 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 has a great story while also keeping to comedy the entire film. Well, it's not, it's not only, it's kind of reductive because it's not only a good comedy, but it's remove the comedy. It's a solid action movie. Yeah. It's it, like everything about that film is good. Yeah. It has a, it is great. It has a great cast. All like all the actors and mm-hmm. actresses in it are great. Yeah. Like it is, it is just a good film all around. Yeah. Neither concept supports the other, like a crutch, like the comedy is solid. The action is solid. It is a solid movie. And I get that. It, it's interesting because I, I, I would have pegged that the movie you'd seen most would not have been your favorite. However, <laughs> you know, it's it's just because of the nature of like when most people ask me what I want, what like what, what should we watch? That is the one that I bring up because it was always on Netflix. And I'm like, if you haven't seen this film, you need to see it mm-hmm. because it is it is a great film like you will enjoy. It. And everyone that I've ever showed it to has enjoyed it. So. Like it's, it's never let me down, which is why I've seen it so many times because I just show it to so many people. (laughs) Yeah, I get that. And, and my, you know, obviously since I've memorized it, mine's the Ninja Turtles, but here's the thing. I bet I've seen one movie more. However, it was at such an age that I don't remember it as well, which is Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, I've seen that. So quick little (laughs) snippet before you continue is. I I I saw that movie a lot of times, but I was I used to play kickball at a random like parking lot, uh-huh. and in, one day somebody left a VHS tape in uh, uh, like what? where we played kickball, and I took it home, and it was Harry and Henderson's. So that was what the VHS tape was. <laughs> was it like a home recorded one, or was it like in a sleeve? No, no, it was like an actual like sleeve, but it didn't have any like tape or anything on it so you didn't know what it was i just like put it in the vhs one day and it Weird. was harry and henderson's that's <laughs> cr- i've seen harry and the henderson so many times like i yeah no it's it's i like harry and henderson it's a great film <laughs> it, not only is it a great film but it's one of those ones too where like you know how you're talking about um and maybe this is only for me however uh back in the 40s there was a radio play called the bickersons that starred the Actor and actress Don Amici and Francis Langford. Don Amici, who I always thought was Donna Amici. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what a weird thing. It's like a man and a woman. They both have lady names, Donna and Francis. And so I always thought Francis was the man, but it's Don Amici. So the old man that John Lithgow goes to get Bigfoot info from that's not the evil French Canadian trapper is Mr. Bickers and himself, Don Amici. <laughs> so for me, when I found that out, because he was always like this, because you get the two 
old grandpas in the movie. You got the the evil French Canadian trapper grandpa, and then you got the Don Amici, who's like, I love the Bigfoot, but I also like making money, so buy a lamp. And and having that good grandpa then being tied to like, oh, I know that guy. Oh, and it's not a his name isn't Donna. It was like <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> There, there is a film though that I think I've probably seen more than anything, but I don't remember most of the time that I've seen it because my parents say this is all you watched for years. Uh, That's Jaws. Really? Hmm. I apparently, as a kid, I was enamored by Jaws, and my parents said you would just say, "Can I watch the fishy movie?" And uh, apparently, I watched <laughs> Jaws. Yeah, a metric shit ton uh-huh. as a kid, and I'm like, why would you let me watch this film? Because I am terrified of going into open water now yeah it's so like i'm sure it's it doesn't help that i saw that film a billion well, times probably not. it was now you're you're probably <laughs> i'm not probably you're definitely younger than me but you probably still had some spillover of like the 80s traumatizing the children sort of i mean i was i was born in 86 i was like yeah, he's between us uh, yeah so so yeah you you still had sort of the 80s um childhood media runoff horrifying before like the 90s sort of shirted up by like 96 like no parents were dying in cartoons anymore yeah yeah they, there was a big there was a big switch up and i remember and, and that's part of it too like maybe that's that's part of that mindset is like since like when i was a kid and child media was like secret of nim or like all like the last unicorn or all these horrifying things our parents didn't blink an eye because i watched jaws at a young age but since i was watching the last unicorn with the giant tit harpy and like the dude who wanted to force all of the the unicorns into the ocean essentially is like a metaphor for like a weird sex slavery thing you know even looking over their shoulder i'm sure my parents are like well where do you draw the line like I, mm-hmm. yeah like now i probably i probably wouldn't let my kid watch a cartoon that would give him strange feelings like that until i was he watching was horror enough. films at like the age of nine yeah and so maybe that's it it was just like we were all running around and children's media was so horrifying it was just like well you know why why not fuck it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, but in all honesty, like, I remember at a very young age watching, like, Are You Afraid of the Dark? And I was like, oh, this is yeah. fantastic. Like, I used to, like, fake and look like I was sleeping. <laughs> so my parents would think that I was sleeping. And then I would stay awake to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because I was so, like, I used to watch Tales of the Crypt Keeper when I was young, too. Yeah, like, I, something, there's... I used to purposely stay up late to do that because I knew it was on late. And I knew if I acted like I was sleeping, I could get away with it, stay up late, and then watch that stuff. So Something we this goes back to my theory and my hypothesis that every time we as humans celebrate or want to do something, you know, outrageous, we want to do it in a way that harms ourselves. And and being scared <laughs> is one of those ways. Like nobody yeah. legitimately wants to fear for their life. However, we will pay money to watch people get murdered. And I like in a microcosm, it all stems from, you know whatever like you you want to be like oh i'm scared but i feel safe my son will do this there's a little so you know those dogs that you put batteries in you turn them on they go yeah 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 yeah." and then they'll do a backflip yeah my mother-in-law got one for my son he is scared shitless however he will not take his (laughs) eyes off of it even though it has never been turned on again he will fixate on it and it's because we all like looking at something and being scared to remind ourselves for whatever reason that I, i don't even know yeah. Like I get it makes you feel alive. Dan. Yeah, that's it. Like we're we're so when you celebrate, you know, you get you go scare yourself, you go get drunk, you go get high, you go fuck some stranger. Like we get self-destructive. And that's, you know, that's what horror movies maybe you're built on is like, you know, when when times are good, it's like, "Oh man, I want to see something fucking terrible." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah like i i mean hey i have i have a zombie ripping off my flesh tattooed on my arm so uh, and that's we all have to come <laughs> we all have to come to terms with it somehow you know <laughs> <laughs> all right so question four and we're, right. we're right on track and uh, i think each question has actually been taking subsequently less time so we're gonna have to stretch this one out pj all right, let's do it. Uh, and this one might. So what is something you want to try but haven't done yet? So something you definitely want to do 
and you're like, I'll get to it one day. I don't want to say bucket list because that's cliche and shit. I, well, this is a bad question for me. I, this is something like maybe it's, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. I'm just saying like anything, anything oh. recent. Like here's something I would like to do and have had an interest in but have not had the time or the drive. I would love to learn to code on a, that, you know, whatever. Actually, computer. that was, that. I mean, that would probably be the only thing. That's that it? I would think of in my mind is, yeah, 100% like, I I would like to code. So if someone... I would like to learn to code because, like, coding is the language of something that I use on a continuous basis. language of computer love. <laughs> so let me, so you're saying like a genie, you know, whatever, uh, Will Smith blew as my balls pops up and says, guess what? Fucking you're going to get something that you've never gotten before. And, and you would go coding. Yep. hundred percent. Hmm. It's because like, I, that's, <laughs> I use a computer so much and like, I like the coding would just integrate with a lot of what I do. So I, like yeah. I've, I've messed around with it on a, on a few different occasions. I've messed around with it in different variations. So like I've, um screwed around with it on like game development terms where i did something as simple as creating a box and creating Whoa. a character who could not leave that box oh so my, like you created they would hit the murder. wall and not <laughs> yeah but like it's like just things like that and i'm just like i think it's it's my <clears throat> it just goes back to something where i just i want to create like mm. the uh, the whole idea of that is like a um and at least in that sense is I would like to, uh, if I ever got the chance to do it, I could create a game, but like, I would like to generate the story. And like, I have, there are times where I've literally woke up in the middle of the night and like had this crazy in-depth dream where I've written it down. Mm -hmm. And I actually wrote one down one time where me, Rob and a few other friends wrote a story based on a dream that I had. Like we all of us combined wrote the story on a dream uh, that I had. And I, I had laid out like this incredibly in-depth explanation of it. And they were like, this was your dream. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm like, I wrote that in the middle of the night. Like I, if I have an in-depth dream, if I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, this is something I want to remember, I'll just write it down. I'll write down everything I could possibly remember from it and then just save it. Man, you are a hundred and million percent smarter than me because I had the same thing Except every time I convince myself that the idea is so good, I can't help but remember it and fall back asleep. And you, then the, the rule of thumb is you have suffers. to be awake for five minutes to remember something. So if you don't stay awake for five minutes, you won't remember oh, fuck. it. So that's why I write it down. PJ, I'm laying awake in the dark for three hours <laughs> fixating on a single idea. So <laughs> deadly scared I will forget it. And then once I have assured myself that it's so ingrained, I will never forget it. I fall asleep only to wake up to say, yep, fucking gone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there are multiple times. Like, there were there was like a whole like story idea that was a continuation idea that we had come up with based off of dreams that I had. And like the, like I was, and then like, it was, I mean, it was all zombie related, but like it was before, <laughs> realistically it was before Walking Dead had come out. So it was just like, it was, was completely this was stuff out. Like, yeah, now it's just like zombies are just being pulled in every which direction. But yeah. Like, but yeah, here, here's, like, here's was, what the problem is. It was so long is. ago that it was just like, oh my God, I'm, like the, all these ideas were popping into my head and I was just like, I, I, I didn't know what to do with them. So I just wrote them all down. And and I guess that's the smart thing to do. Like I have a catalog of half written and semi thought out things. And, you know, I guess I, I only capture them in my weaker moments because, you know, the for whatever reason, the stuff I write down is like, nope, this sucks, but I'll save it. And the things <laughs> that I think are legitimately brilliant, I'm like, so great. Don't need the pencil. Don't need the paper. Going to go ahead and hit the hay again. <laughs> Gonzo. So I've got like, for for example, I can't remember all the brilliant ideas. I can tell you some of my stupid ideas. So I had a, um, basically the idea was a children's book for adults that touched upon exotic animals. So like your freshwater dolphin, your purple frog, your all these weird things. And I wrote up a treatment for all these strange animals that were just like, completely pointless like you wouldn't even want to read them while taking a shit like it's less value <laughs> than a bathroom reader 
But the thing that would make it would be like a picture of the stupid animal next to it. And since I can't draw, yeah. it would be like a stick figure who pointing at a stupid purple blob <laughs> that would be like a frog. Be like, oh, it's so stupid. Like, you know, but but and for whatever reason, I still save that. And every once in a while, when I go into my writing folder, I'll see it and be like, one day someone's going to read that paragraph I wrote about the freshwater dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> probably not probably not <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's i i've always i i tell everyone that i know like if you ever have like an like something like that you should always write it down because it's what? it's just yeah. like it's it's something that comes to you randomly and like i there are times where i've had the same dreams over and over again and when i do i continuously write them down because i've had like carbon dreams. copies of dreams to a t where i'm just like this is really weird i've had this dream before and i remember everything that happened in the dream and i wake up and i'm like that i did that before i've done that in my dreams before and i would just write it down i used to do that and you know not not you know people love hearing about dreams but i remember having <laughs> a period of my time <laughs> where i was like that's it I've heard about it. I'm going to do it. I made like a conscious decision to be like a lucid dreamer so that in the dream I would have, I would recognize that I was dreaming and be like, ah, here's the thing. <laughs> Not today. I I <laughs> was able to pull it off, whether I'm bullshitting myself into thinking I did or not. I would sometimes recognize I was in a dream only to realize that not even my own imagination would play the way I wanted it to. And the one that this is a pointless story I'm about to tell you. <laughs> the, Aren't they all? Uh, uh, yeah. But th this <laughs> one is even more. So here's the story. The, the repeated dream I had that made me so frustrated yet. So full of hope was this, uh, mm -hmm. the setting, my grandmother's carport, the object in question of my desire, a small UFO, a small disc that I would sit in, uh, you know, classic flying saucer type that you would see in a movie that you they have the glass dome, like Marvin, the Martian stands, the glass dome. So I'm sitting in this thing and, uh, it's got two joysticks that each have a button. And I innately know that I've got to load this UFO onto the small catapult. I have push the button that will launch it. You know, like many millions of toys of the eighties. And then I would have to press the buttons in a specific order to get this thing to fly and bank and shit. And I knew it. I knew it every time. I knew how to do it. But for some reason, in every dream, the battery was fucked or one of the joysticks was broken. And I knew it was a dream because I knew that UFOs were not a thing. And I would say, God damn it. I know this is a dream. How can this be broken? Why is there no power? And I would spend the entire dream tinkering <laughs> with the thing that I knew would work because it was in a dream but could not get it to. Every fucking time it would devolve into me just like looking at this small UFO being like, I know it's got to work. I'm the one in my own head thinking of this thing. Why can't I get it to work? Never did. Never could get that motherfucker to fly. Had that dream a dozen times. Ugh, what a pointless story. Anywho, last question, PJ. All right. So, when you look back onto your life, and this doesn't have to be something you did necessarily, but is there, can you look back on something in your life and go, what the fuck was that about? Um, my entire first 20 years of my life. I need like a, a moment in time. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like 2020. Um, <laughs> Cause I have a specific like three second window that really shook me that I based this question off of. Uh, so there were times where I used to go. So like one of my best friends went to uh, uh, state college, UConn mm -hmm. in Connecticut, UConn? which is like our like premier mm -hmm. state college here. It's the um, one. <laughs> yeah, it, it is the one in Connecticut. Uh, and I used to go up there all the time and I was up there. Um, <clears throat> we I used to go up there like all the time on the weekends to party and whatnot. And I remember being there on a weekend one time and we were like everyone was i was just talking to like a random group of at least 20 people mm -hmm. who were just circled around me as i was talking and i was i i was 
drunk out of my mind. So I don't, re- I barely, I don't even know what I was talking about. But I remember having to excuse myself because I had to throw up. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I said, excuse me, I need to throw up, turned around, threw up, and went back into the conversation <laughs> like nothing happened. I Okay, so I've got now two stories for you. The first, so so the, the reason I, I thought of this question was because, and I've still got the picture. So back when, um, does anybody remember what a Blackberry is? Not the fruit, but the piece yes. of technology. Yeah, I had one. Yeah. I had the first touchscreen one. I This is before touchscreen. I had a Blackberry, and at the time I was working as a construction worker, this was when, like, the zombie fad was cresting but was not an impacted ass full yet so yeah uh like and it was right around the time that that dude ate the other dude's face under the underpass and yada 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 so there's a lot going on oh so bath salts yeah so yeah. i'm driving home from work in the middle of the night because i'm working at the local college and we are retrofitting their basketball stadium with blah 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 bling, blah and we have to do it at night so driving down the road come to a stoplight it's nobody it's 2 a.m it's downtown, nobody's on the road, and all of a sudden my my eyes catch this, like, you know those little roadside uh, signs that'll be like, caution, you know, construction ahead. It flashes and it says, look out, zombies ahead. And I, so I took a picture <laughs> of it with my Blackberry, which is like a 300 by 280 pixel photo that I still have, size of a postage stamp. And I thought, oh, that's funny. Someone hacked it. And I went, click, and I started driving. And I thought, well, what if? What if it's real? What if it's real? <laughs> <laughs> and so I spent like and and I you know I'm I'm saying this like oh haha funny click that da, 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 da. this all happened in the span of like a millisecond like as soon as I snapped the picture I immediately thought oh fuck what if that's the last picture I take as a human being <laughs> and so I spent the ride home looking for people on the street looking for other cars like I my head was on a swivel because that thing said there were zombies ahead that was like me I, when I I've first seen saw pictures Gothica. like that online of of like road sign roadside signs that have said that. And it was just <laughs> like in a in a whatever. It it hit me at the right time. So I always look at look back at that and be like, what the fuck, you idiot. Like of course it was a prank. Like you were in you were <laughs> like you were at the college in a college town where college kids like to fuck around and the thing was outside of a bar. <laughs> but I still in the moment I was like, ah and I was floored at home and I was Still toying with the idea of like you see someone in the road, there's a fifty fifty chance Just I'm not even down. gonna hit the yeah I'm not gonna hit the brake. Like explain <laughs> later. Like I would, they want my brain. Yeah, they're not getting them. I would rather have some interesting questions to answer later than to get killed now. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when Pretty I saw much. when I saw Gothica, I think I've said this before, but I i think i was in stanford i don't know where i was i was driving home after i watched gothica in the middle of the night on the Merritt parkway it was raining and i was freaking out that halle berry was just or somebody was just gonna be in the middle of the highway while i'm driving home (laughs) she's dressed up as cat Um, um, (laughs) freaked me out on the Merritt parkway she's just gonna pop out hey so here's a vomit story since you told your vomit story (laughs) great (laughs) <laughs> long time ago like I'm on one new year's eve like i could not help but throw up because i do not know my limits mm-hmm. and and so you know i'm with this girl and i'm like i'll be right back and i'm vomiting so loud and so hard that it's like echoing through the house <laughs> and i like just kissed her and i left i'm like ah just like puking like forever it felt like i was going like i it felt like it was coming from so deep that I, my asshole was going to pop out of my mouth. <laughs> so I come back and everybody's like, you know, whatever. And she's looking at me and I'm like, that was not because of you. <laughs> that was like the most tactical thing I could say after like throwing up so hard. I thought my ass was going to come out of my mouth. I was like, that wasn't because of you. I pointed at her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So yeah, throwing up stories, always good. <laughs> yeah that my like people still bring it up occasionally when we'll like i'll get together with like old friends and whatnot and we'll have like uh <laughs> people will always bring it up because like um one of my best friends there are tons of mutual friends between us that remember that story because they were all there when it happened and they're like pj is the pol- the most polite drunk ever <laughs> because he literally said excuse me i need to throw up and then walked away threw up and then came right yeah. back to the conversation like nothing happened yeah throwing up is something that is a make or break 
in a human. There's two types of people, PJ. There's the type of people who can throw up, rally, go back to being who they were, and, and you know, realize what happened and move on. And then there are people who throw up and, uh, like, are a wreck for the rest of the day. Yeah, that's like, not usually me. I can I can go back to how I was as seen in that conversation. <laughs> I literally just, like... Like, I don't even, I, I barely remember it. I, to this day, barely remember. I remember doing it and saying, excuse me, and like walking away, ha- that all happening. <laughs> I don't know the specifics, but people always tell me, and they're just like, I've never seen anybody do that in my entire That's life. That's funny. And I, you like- know, <laughs> I hate throwing up, and my gag reflex is like fucking insanely like weak. However, when I do throw up, and it's like, I'm fine through the throwing up and I can rally immediately. Like I, I spent an entire day sick to my stomach telling myself I'm not going to go home because you know, that's not who I was. So whatever I, I spent like an entire six hours of an eight hour shift feeling sick to my stomach. And finally I was like, that's it. I'm going to tell my boss I got to go home and to prove it. I, there was a, it was again, I was at a, a construction site and there are garbage cans everywhere because everybody's sweeping and there's day laborers. So like in the big room where we all meet, I pulled the garbage can close, unloaded like a gallon of vomit, like wiped my mouth. And I told my boss, I was like, okay, I'm going to go home. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you do that yeah because if if you can like go from because i didn't look great obviously but i went from just like being oh i'm a little under the weather looking you know the clammy to like problem child two, like <laughs> wah, to like wipe <laughs> i'm gonna go home now like if you can keep your shit together after doing something that horrific in front of someone you get respect if I'd collapsed yeah. or like if I'd gotten all weepy eyed, I was like, oh, I threw up in front of everybody. Then they'd be like, what a puss. But I was like, Blah! I'm going home. And they're like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you do that. So what I'm saying is my, my advice to you is if you barf, fucking pretend like it never happened. People will think that you're the toughest motherfucker on the planet. But if you go like, and you get a little you're bit crazy in- and then it won't yeah. matter regardless. Whatever it is, whatever it is that people <laughs> will think of you, if you can recover from a barf, like quick, you're, you're almost like a hero. Like I, I can't tell you how many people I have puked in front of. And then we're just like, whoop. And they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's over. <laughs> like do you, I'm not going to have a morning session over the breakfast that I just lost. Like it's done. We can move on. It happened. Let's yeah. keep, let's go. Do you have a tissue? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I need to clean myself up. Man, why? But that's the worst. Like if, if I could, here's the thing about barfing. If I could have one wish, like Jeannie says, you're going to have to barf eventually, but you can make one aspect of it better. I'd say, never let it come out of my nose. For the love of Christ, <laughs> shut those pipes when there's something coming it's back It's only up. ever happened to me once, Holy so I'm, I'm okay with that. It doesn't happen every time, but when it does... It burns. Yes! And not only that, but like if there's chunks of stuff... Ugh. Oh, 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 right. oh, oh, I've never had... I've never gone that gone <sighs> down that route. It's just burned once. Yeah, well, well, if you're, it depends on what what's coming back up. So, you know, it's it's a crapshoot. So, but seriously, next time you feel like barfing, remember this conversation in your head. Be like, rally be after polite. the barf. Yeah. Be polite. Yeah, be polite. Be like, polite. Don't and take it like a boss. Yeah, don't don't be a dick about it. What you want? Because that's the thing. You want you want to have composure. Because nausea is something that everybody can relate to, but when you see it in someone. Something doesn't click until you see them completely Ralph and you're like, oh, okay, I completely get it. (laughs) So rally after a barf and it's practically a superpower. You'd be your own (laughs) anti-hero. And we brought it all the way around. Yeah. Look at that. The the complete circle all the way to the background. You don't have to be the Hulk to look like the Hulk to a man after barfing and walking away. (laughs) Can you imagine the Hulk throwing up? Oh, Oh. my God. Just like, yeah, like gamma infused muscular tissue pushing out yeah it would be like a sonic <laughs> boom of like burritos <laughs> here's here's a funny story speaking of the bodily functions of fictional characters i for whatever reason come back to this conversation i had with my grandmother in the back of a minivan once we were talking about very it. specific yeah and i the only reason is because i we were postulating like 
you know that this very thing the the body expulsions of various uh fictional characters and of course you know humans loving gimmicks we go small we go big we go weird so i was like grandma check this out what if king kong farted it would blow down an entire house and (laughs) my grandmother is not the type of was not the type of person for bathroom humor however the thought of king kong farting so hard that he knocked down a house got her laughing (laughs) so i'll always remember and you know she was of that age she probably saw the original i would say donkey kong but that's not it she saw the original king kong in theater so she's imagining Faye ray getting blasted (laughs) by that claymation's flapping ass cheeks that's funny so i'll always remember you know fictional characters got to do shit too literally (laughs) (laughs) yeah you gotta blast the deuce kong gotta do it too Anyway, PJ, why don't we talk a little bit about video games? Um, All right. Because there's a few I've been playing, and I'm sure you've been playing some too. So really quick, you know, I've, I, so I don't, I don't know. So I don't know where to start. So three things happened almost serendipitously. Um, Keith recommended a game that wasn't a troll. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Dead End Road. So that game is essentially a 16-bit-esque driving simulator slash horror game. It's weird. Okay. So I was like, fucking fascinating. I can't believe that I've never come across something like this 16-bit pixel art, yada, yada, yada. So step forward to st- stage two of this story. I am putting mm-hmm. together a RetroPie system, and I come across a legitimate Nintendo Super Nintendo game called Test Drive 2 in which that's all you do it's it's the first game minus the horror oh. so <laughs> it's it's a legitimate 16 bit Super Nintendo game where you can drive a Porsche, a Lambo and you're just driving it it's just like hey man take this thing out in the fucking road and I'm like yeah I will thank you <laughs> so <laughs> you like those driving sims love man them. I don't know I love driving so I obviously like an IRL translates to video games perfectly. So the capper of this story is there's been a game on my wish list forever. It's a dollar fifty. It's called Retro Wave. It's essentially an endless runner driving simulator in which you can sit in the car, but it's like a phone game blown up to full blown proportions. So I get to sit in a DeLorean listening to Vaporwave in a Vaporwave scene, dodging cars <laughs> from inside a DeLorean. Dollar fifty. So, I, you know, it, it's so strange. I guess the arc of the story is it's strange that I, number one, found three things so similar. One new, one vintage, and one inspired by vintage, but is new. It's weird. Yeah. And I played that game for like fucking two and a half hours, just yeah, smashing into the rears of cars. Yep. It's, I mean, it at the end of the day, especially as I've gotten older, um... The thing that I've realized I've go to gaming for, I mean, it's obviously an escape. So, like, you, you play games that you want to use to escape things. Exactly. So like, That's a driving sim is is one of those. Like, I there are a lot of um, different gaming channels that I listen to, and like their podcasts and stuff. And there are people on there who are like legitimately one of their favorite games to go back to is driving sims. I don't because the thing like they just enjoy the the. It's it's You're, chill. Like you just listen to yeah. music and you just drive. It, it's a couple <laughs> of different things. It's it's control and also like sort of check out. Cause when when I like we go on road trips like every weekend, we're in the car going somewhere, not getting around people, obviously, because they're fucking disgusting. <laughs> but we get in the car and your your state is sketchy, man. Yeah, we <laughs> stay we stay behind the locked doors and we watch people through the glass like a human zoo. Yep. But when we go places, like, that's the thing. You you are in control. Like, especially if a manual transmission, which I am a fan of and own one of, you are you're you have that connection to this thing. And then when you translate it to a video game and can actually, like, do, like, you know, road rage <laughs> will hit you and you'll want to smash someone off the road, but you can't. <laughs> However, for a dollar fifty, I can get into a Ferrari and smash everyone on the road that I want. So yeah. it, it's... I, I think that's it. We want to do normal everyday things, but remove the stakes because yeah. sometimes you just want to go fucking nuts. That's true. Yeah. 
Like we wouldn't like Pretty much. simulators wouldn't be a genre if we didn't have people like half of people going to simulators are like, I want to get really good at a thing. And the other half go to it to be like, I'll get good at it. But then sometimes when I want to go nuts, but can't do it in real life, I'll do it here. <laughs> like the gr- <laughs> Grand Theft Auto as a franchise lives off of this credo. Yeah. I mean, Hey, when Grand Theft Auto Five came out for quite some time, I played that game yeah. a lot. It's so. like, hey, here's a, you know, a simulator that basically says this is real life, and people will get pissed off. But good news, there's no real uh, people like the sandbox. Yeah, that's that's what realistically people like. Give them a sandbox to do whatever they want. In. I think, but here's the thing: there's a caveat. The sandbox is good. But you need restrictions. You need someone being like, don't do that because that's what makes it fun. Minecraft is a sandbox and and it's fun to build things in like a legitimate sandbox is. However, in in this context, because I, I, full disclosure, bought like six driving simulators during the sale. <laughs> and I keep going back to the driving sims that give me restrictions and or limitations and or you objectives. You like Minecraft? No, I do. But I, I, I go back to the ones that say, here's the world, but you got to conform to these rules because those are fun to break. When you go to, into a yeah. world with no rules, you know, whatever you, you, whatever you run around naked, you paint your dick on a wall you do whatever you want. If there's no one there being like, Hey, stop doing that. You're just doing shit just to do it. You need someone telling you <laughs> do this or don't do this. So you can be like, I yeah. will, or I won't. If there's no rules, then it's just like, well, no matter how beautiful the Island is on BNG driving simulator and I can drive around it for hours, there's literally nothing for me to do because there's no objective. Mm-hmm. I, I found out that I liked breaking the rules sometimes. Exactly. There were tons of... You want to. Um, There were tons of games that, you know, like you said, had rules, and then Saints Row came out, mm. and then Saints Row was basically GTA without rules. Well, with looser rules. <laughs> um, Zanier. Saints Row 4 had no fucking rules. <laughs> he could do whatever you, you want. You could just run around and jump higher than buildings right, but in that game. Yes, yes, <laughs> so. that is true. However... <laughs> it it coupled the fuck around part because eventually you will get tired. And that's what balances a sandbox. A sandbox is only as fun as the shit in it. So, yeah, no, it's, I, that was like, I, people were like, Oh, do you like GTA or do you like Saints Row? I'm like, Whoa, I, I like Saints Row because I can just go fuck around and not exactly. care about a damn thing. I said, I like GTA because it has story, mm-hmm. but I like, I like Saints Row because I'm like, if I want to go grab a, a bat and just whack people and run around the town for 30 minutes and just do whatever I want, I can. Well, and, so. and, and that's part of it too, is like, there's, there's varying degrees. Uh, but, but that's part of why Saints Row, I think, broke away and became its own thing because Saints Row, you know, GTA says the world is the world is the world. The rules still apply. If you fuck shit up, the police will show up in Saints Row. You can fuck shit up as long as you're not in a mission. You're, you're pretty much given free reign. You can spawn as many cars. You can shoot as many things as you want. It, it, it was like it, it, it stayed it in the first, um, Saints Row it was it was kind of GTA esque, mm. and then they just they just went with it yeah. and just rolled with everything like the craziness of it by Saints Row two, and then by Saints Row three it was like perfect. Oh yeah, it was, it was like completely the balance of everything. But that's what keeps you there when because because the the designers know they say well here's the sandbox with no rules you're gonna get bored of that and go to the missions. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I loved playing saints row three and four and i would fuck around with helicopters and rocket launchers and jump off of buildings and smash people you know with with my car or whatever but eventually you're like okay well i'm done abusing people who literally react by just going oh and ragdolizing now it's time to do something (laughs) with a point (laughs) yeah and that's part of it that's you know even though the game a uh, retro wave was a dollar fifty. The point is to not get fucked up while driving down a straight road. Mm-hmm. Simple, and it keeps bringing <laughs> me back. It's not you know it's technically open world because I the road never ends. You just go until you crash. But yeah. If it were just the road without the cars, I wouldn't fucking play it because there'd be no reason. That's true. Yeah. You need something in. You need I. As much as I hate to say this, you need somebody or a something outside of the sandbox being like, here are the rules. 
because then you can be like, okay, I'll do that. Or fuck you. I'm not going to, but you need someone there. Break them all. Yeah. Like there, there's, there may not be a lifeguard by this pool. However, there's a sign that says no diving. You can dive if you want, <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying people love breaking the rules so you have to give them rules to break if you just say go nuts they'll be like okay cool after they get tired they go well now there's no rules to break mm, i'm out of here <laughs> so have you been playing anything new recently pj now that the sale's over and all that other good shit like is um, have you been i know you've been playing a lot of auto chess so like the two games that i've been playing the most recently are yakuza 7 mm. and auto chess Though those are my two like go tos. So right Yakuza now. Seven is not like a dragon, or that is like a dragon. That is like a dragon. Okay. It's I mean it's it's called like a dragon in the U S. But it's technically uh, I don't know in no, Japan it's no. called Yakuza Seven. Yeah, so I, it's, the numbers I don't, I don't keep up with the Yakuza. I just know that this is the first entry in the series that made me legitimately interested. It, it's I me and um me and the uh, my cohorts at um, Play No Save are writing uh, like do review for it because he beat it and i i'm like right near the end right now so we're writing uh like a dual review for it because i think it is one of the best rpgs i have played in a very long time it looks great Um, and it seems like so good (laughs) it seems like one of those games that like there are very few games that have triple a money that have personality and appeal to me and Yakuza seems yeah. to be one of those few because, like, there are tons of indie games that have tons of flair and style and personality. And then there's a million AAA games where it's like, okay, you're the same person essentially running around doing the same missions, like whatever Anthem or whatever. Very, very seldom does a AAA game come out like that, like Yakuza, where I'm like, you know, nothing really interested me before, but maybe it was like the trailers they put together, but they know how to craft a story. Like that's where you need to start fucking story. Yeah. Their, their story is phenomenal. The characters are phenomenal. The fact that the entire concept of this game came from an April fool's joke (laughs) that people loved so much that the studio turned it into the actual game is just amazing. They, it was an April fool's joke three years ago and it became a game. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the thing. I don't I I'm I'm not on board with people being like, can you believe that a quirky idea? Of course. That's what people love. People love specific auteur related shit. Quentin Tarantino is like a prime example that everybody knows about because his style is very recognizable. He does not compromise that style based on whatever because that's his art. Yeah. I I lost the through line, but moral of the story is there are are Companies out there that say, here's a story and then we'll build a game around it. And they say, well, here's a concept where you shoot dudes and then we'll be like, oh, it's like Halo. And then you pay money. <laughs> yeah. My, the, the, best, the best thing I could say, though, is the, the one thing that really cemented my choice into buying this game was when they did the, init- the release trailer for yakuza like a dragon Mm. and they showed it off to be this like wacky like funny comedy with just like a middle-aged man going through like some crazy times about getting out getting out of jail and stuff and i'm and it the way that it like portrayed it in the uh the trailer i was like this looks hilarious and and just everything about it but on top of it being hilarious it is an incredibly deep story that you wouldn't expect and it's yeah, it, there's just so many layers to it and it literally threw me a loop i'm like i knew like i've known yakuza has been like this wide uh like ranging series in terms of story for a long time and it's never really grabbed me beforehand because i haven't been a giant fan of the action mm. like fighting system that has been previous but i'm like I'm, rpgs are my thing this being a turn-based rpg game like when it when when it came in, I'm like, oh, I, I have to play this. And then everybody I know that plays turn based RPGs was like, oh my god, like the it's a really good battle system. Like the guy who makes Yakuza is obsessed with old school RPGs, so like he took every like step of the way in crafting this to be a good RPG because those are the games that he grew up on. 
So uh, I'm, I'm like playing it. You can tell like every every way that he's crafted his battle system is is very much intertwined with all the old school RPGs, and it it really makes it stand out. And it, having a phenomenal story just only helps it. So it's like a, it's got jobs, mm-hmm. it's got a great battle system. Everybody's story is great. I think that the protagonist is one of the best protagonists I've seen in a game in a long time. Like it's just everything about it is just fun. It's just it's a fun game to play, and I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. So that that so Yakuza Like a Dragon sort of encapsulates my entire ethos when it comes to gaming. Like, here's the thing: a, a compelling story is told from a single point of view. When someone yeah. is telling you a story, it is someone telling you a story. So when you yeah. when you go and say, okay, here's a board that needs to tell us what boxes to tick. If you have a single person telling a single story, there's going to be inherent flaws. There's going to be characterization. There might be something insulting or offensive. Moral of the story is you're going to get a human experience when you go to a room full of people being like, is this appropriate? Should this be acceptable? Blah, blah, blah. So moral, I guess what I'm getting at is even though you know, money can hide quality. Like you could, I, from watching one trailer for Yakuza like a dragon, I felt connected to the story and I felt like the makers felt something. And when I watched like destiny or Anthem or any of those new Skinner box things, you could throw a billion dollars at those ads. It still hit my chest like a rock and fell to the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Yakuza, Yakuza is, it it stands out among its counterparts for the year and like even um just generally talking about like my game of the years for instance like i put yakuza in my i think i put it as fourth mm-hmm. for my for my games of the year and i'm just like it it is it, it is a standout game in a year full of incredibly <sighs> good games like this past year had a lot of really big releases and it stood out to me and for it to come in the top five for me this year was a big thing. Cause like I've played a lot of games this year and there were a lot of games who deserved to be up in that top position. Yeah. And I threw it up. Let there, me, so. let me, let me run this up your flagpole. Like when it mm-hmm. comes to video games, a lot of people give me this, that or the other excuse. And uh, so whatever video games are a non-essential thing. Uh, mm-hmm. so you you obviously are since they are leisure time. I don't understand why people aren't spending all of their time. Like it, it's a game. It should be fun. And I guess my my thesis of all this rambling is: if you look at something and it appeals to you, like and you feel an emotion stir, like I get that. But I'm I don't get these people who are like, well, you know, it fills the time. Like if you're just looking to burn time, stare at a wall. Like video games are, are You're talking about like the destinies and the yeah. service style games. And not only yeah. that, but like just just badly crafted storytelling or whatever in general, no matter like whether it has money behind it or not. Like I I mean, I can't talk crap about service games because there was a service game that I played for many years. So just because you drink some of the Kool-Aid doesn't mean you weren't poisoned. Like it's <laughs> I mean, it, but it's there so I played Diablo for many years and Diablo is like all of like Destiny and those type of games are crafted off of Diablo's right. base. And here's the thing, so, I'll, like this is all opinion. So I'll I'll never say like you you were wrong for doing it. My only thing is ask yourself this if you are buying and playing something and because it's so strange watching these all these because the the word game means so much to me because games are fun and like maybe this is more of a overarching thing but if a game isn't fun to you why are you playing it like if you're doing it because everybody else is playing it or like here's the thing i don't understand speed running as a concept this is macro and obviously off topic but like if you're going to take something that is a game that is fun it's not for that leisure off topic based on the time of the year yeah and but here's the thing like if you spend your time mining every ounce of joy out of the thing that you enjoy just so you can show someone how good you are at it what have you gained but some people find joy that's the thing i i can't speed running that's that's my that's my point is for me 
it seems completely counterintuitive to spend $80 on a game and then spend $120 on DLC just so you can get online with a bunch of other assholes <laughs> to play for a few months before the server depopulates. And you say, yeah, well... It's the- like I've I have lost a lot of joy in in service games. There, there are like I mean you as one of the games that I play, Auto Chess. That's it's not a service game. It's a competitive game, mm. so it's different. Like I I I still like to be competitive in some in some sense. Played sports growing up, and then like even when I started getting into gaming, like I was always playing some some shooter or something to get that competitive aspect out of me. Auto chess allows me to do that. Um, I also play another shooting game, Paladins, with uh, my fiance, who she enjoys Paladins as well. Mm. But like those are the games that I would get the competitive aspect of myself out. And then everything else that I play is just single-player experiences. Yeah. I, I've strayed away from the service games because they're just they're just time sinks they're time sinks for absolutely no reason right i think my the question you need to ask yourself that's the most important is like i like i'm so far beyond bullshit in my life everybody who comes to me with literally anything gets to answer this question is what you are bringing me going to bring me more than it is going to take from me so if you get yeah. a game like destiny or whatever i, I don't want to keep harping on these big like whatever but whatever your thing is, like if you get it and you say, okay, was the intention of this game to provide a bunch of people a fun experience or was it to slightly update something that was already making a bunch of money to get more money from you? Like my intent yeah, for I mean, this that's... show is to for you to have a fucking good time and or be entertained and or whatever. Get something out of it. If you're just tuning into the show to be like, the room is quiet. I need some annoying person <laughs> to shout into the void. <laughs> like, why are you listening? Like, that... I, I don't, I, I guess my problem is having all these arguments. We're like, Oh, cause everybody says, not everybody, very select people say, Oh Dave, you don't like fun. I love fun. I fucking love so much fucking fun that I can't get enough fucking fun in my life. Literally. <laughs> I do not have enough fun in my life and I'm always looking for more fun. However, yeah. if the thing you are doing is not fun, why do you feel the need to defend a multi-billion dollar corporation's decisions that you bought. <laughs> I I argue there's a, a pretty large gaming group on Facebook that I'm in that I argue with people on a daily basis about this. And I'm just like, they're like, all oh, this game's coming out. Or they, like even today they were talking about, oh, Ubisoft announced the new Star Wars game today. They're doing an open world Star Wars game. <sighs> the people who made Division are making the game and i'm like well division is a service oh like right, shooting like, game so i'm like and they're like well what about and people in that exact post were like well what about division three i'm like don't you have enough with division two and they're like well i just want an updated version of division three i'm like you can get that from division two if they just <laughs> updated it you don't need a whole new game for that yeah. they're gonna make you they would charge you another 60 dollars and to play the exact same game video games like, is the only place where this blind sight is like so uh, they're just like well yeah fine whatever like with with some things i get like let's say with cars they can release a new model you know whatever you put a bunch of miles on the old one like a game you could like i still you can still play the super mario brothers for the nes like that game still works today you don't have to trade it in you can find a copy Dude, of it uh, super super mario 64 still plays incredibly yeah. well all these games like that's the thing if if the game is good <laughs> then you keep going back to it and I that's play yeah. the old I mean, tetris it's... all day exactly. look, look at you you're making a retro pie because i'm sure you want to play yeah. old games that's the thing i if you know, you could lie to me and say, oh, I'm having fun. But in a month and I say, how's that game treating you? If it's like, what? Then it wasn't fun and you fucking lied to me. If you ask me, yeah. hey, Dave, how's Retro Wave? I'll say it's fucking fun. I'm going to play it for a fucking long ass time. Because I'm not going to lie to you or me. Like, yeah. if I lie to myself, I know that I'm lying and I'm like, nah, I'm actually not <laughs> having fun. And I'm regretting my purchase. <laughs> That's like well, with Catan. I can play Catan. I put it down every once in a while, I, but so I play simple. it on my phone all the time. And yet, like, nothing changed from Halo to Halo except the skins. Yeah. And I kept buying them thinking like, oh, it's so much better, bullshitting myself. But it's like the trigger still works the same way. The grenades are say, still the same way. Wait a second. 
Halo Two was better than Halo One. Don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, yes, I will give you that because there was. But Halo, the every, every Halo after Halo Two was not better than Halo right. Two because so. Halo One was like <laughs> no one expected it to blow up, and it was just like the same room ninety times. Yeah. By two, they were like, "Hey, now we got money. We polished it." By three, it's like, "Hey, here's the same thing again." Mm. But a collector's then, edition. Then the the newest when when the new Xbox was about to drop, they were like, "We're gonna release another Halo with the system." Why? And they showed it off, and people were like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! What is this? This just looks like the same thing it's always been." And then they were like, "We're gonna push this game back a year." I, so that next Halo you know, isn't coming out for like I, I, nine months. I love things that change, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. If something changes, at least they're trying something. Like yeah, you may no, you they, may hate they it, need to like, but. You know, that's, but you, it's the nostalgia dollar, uh, is so much larger than the original ideas dollar, but th- that's not even a new thing. Like my, as long as my art favorite existed, game of the previous year was an indie title, all of my favorite games, like as long as I can remember, like, let's say in the last five years, almost all of them have been like indies because they focus on like a mechanic and or a story. Yeah, well, my I I was a giant Hades fan, and Hades was like twenty dollars. Yeah, I think, and I, like mm. I fought people. I'm like, this this is the best game this year. And they're like, ah, blah blah blah. I'm like, no no no. I'm <sighs> like, this it is it is the best of its genre. Not only there that, is no game in that genre that has come out better. And, and not only that, but like, ever. so so you look at it and you say, okay, as a game outside of all context, like there's merit. But then you say, okay, so. Game A and Game B. One's an indie and one's a big money developer. And one's, like, super fun and one's, like, super boring. And and you say, well, what's the difference? Like, the, the people who made Hades were like, this is going to be a fun game that people are going to love. And we're going to throw a bunch of story elements and yada, yada, yada. I, we know we're, we're, we're... It is It is the most, like, positively reviewed game on Steam ever. Yeah, and it... Ever. It's all... It, <laughs> Because it's a vision. Like, you know why people love or hate Stanley Kubrick? Because he was a weirdo and he had a vision. He didn't compromise shit. Every famous director, you'd say, what are they known for? And you say, they love him or hate him. Like George yeah. Lucas, love him or hate him. Uh, Tarantino, love him or hate him. Spielberg, like all these people have these big names. It's because they stay true to themselves. They don't say, well, what does... Like, you think Spielberg sat down and he's like, you know what? I'm going to ask someone what they like and you think they told them well i would like a small alien who comes here uh meets a boy and then has to go home no no one fucking told him that he does he steal drew barrymore yeah (laughs) (laughs) all these people you know they do it because that's how they see it not because they see it the way it should be seen by others yeah Uh, you know whatever people say oh well i was offended good it's art bitch (laughs) fucking if you aren't offended, Welcome if it doesn't make world. you feel something, why did you do it? Yeah, you wanted to feel Art nothing. Art is supposed to make you feel something, <laughs> whether negative or positive. Yeah, like it, if you want to feel something, experience art. If you want to feel nothing, sit in a chair, breathe in and out slowly, and keep your eyes closed. Fucking losers. <laughs> <laughs> just exist. Yeah, just exist. You got you got that covered. Uh, <laughs> so PJ. Play no save. Yes. Give us all your various outlets so the people, should they want to come and see you, can. Uh, so you can do YouTube website, which is also Play No Save. Um, uh, Facebook, which honestly I'm not really using because I don't really like Facebook. I I, uh, I don't know where I, I I keep vacillating from social media to social media because like. Eh. Who, who's where? I don't know. Fuck. To be honest, the the one that I use the most is um, Twitter. So, like, if you want to see me post on social media for Play No Save, it's always on Twitter. Okay. But um, I just actually posted my few, first YouTube video this week, mm-hmm. like two days ago. Um, and I've been streaming on Twitch, which I've been streaming for my personal channel. But I may eventually stream from... Uh, I have the play no save handle as well mm-hmm. but my personal channel is status foo with two o or three o's three and then Jeez. yes let's go crazy <laughs> on that one um <laughs> but like yeah if, if i ever do anything with any of my counterparts or like a group thing it'll always be from play no save instead of my personal channel so 
Um, I have that yeah, rock and I, roll. And- Twitch is one of those ones where, I don't know, I, I, I hooked onto YouTube simply because I wasn't about to do more than I can barely focus on, like producing content. Like, and then be like, oh, there's more than one place to put it. Nope, fuck, I won. That's what I'm doing. So I'm stuck with YouTube. Twitch, however, I believe is better I, I, for you. I can actually stream to all of them at the same time if I want to. So yeah, I have the here. means to do the, the multi-stream. So I've, I've actually been testing around with it this past week. So I'm, I'm sure when I do stream, it will be me streaming to every outlet. You know, I, I you know even if it's something about a live show, man, it, live streaming. I, there's something I will watch someone play a video game live. However, after it's recorded, I'm like, eh, it's already done. Yeah. It's not watching it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about it. it's just there's the majesty and a magical quality of live even if it's just like someone people will watch people reading a book people will watch a video people will watch people do anything yeah it's like eating the thing is people will watch people do anything if it's something that they enjoy because they want to see other people enjoy it too and that's realistically why they watch it i you know maybe maybe one day and this is uh, by far and away my worst idea ever because it's an Orwellian nightmare but in in line with the Peloton bike and the personal training mirror you know they're probably going to have a real doll that you can project a face onto oh Jesus so then you can just have tea with you know whatever, whatever. some some internet celebrity with huge jugs and you turn off the face and you do horrible things to them after the internet connection is shut off <laughs> <laughs> anyway that that's something for the future uh PJ, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a blast. We always get into some interesting stuff, especially the politics of video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, I, I, here's the thing. As I get older, I'm less and less interested in making a change, but more and more interested in arguing about the things that I will never care about. And here we are. <laughs> so, here, we made it. We, We're we here. did it. <laughs> video game technology and or the enjoyment thereof by the masses affects me little to none however i will burn an hour and a half on it perfect <laughs> so guys thank you for listening this has been you know the show if you want to get in contact with us you can we got a discord server and all that crazy shit so guys remember until next time i'm dave i'm krista and I'm Poop J. One. PJ One. <laughs> <laughs> You're like your own little Star Wars dro- drone. Droid? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Saying bleep bloop, liberty blap. See you next week, guys. Bye. <laughs>